Hello and welcome to screencast number 15. In this screencast, we'll be building a web-based weather application using JavaScript. We'll be using a jQuery plugin called Simple Weather JS in order to build the cool features that we need in a weather application. Now before starting to build the weather application, let's have a look at what we are going to build. Now if I head on to my weather application, which is running on my local server to take advantage of the location feature, I am given with a warning to allow or deny location access. It will detect my current location and will give the weather for that current location. It also gives me the humidity percentage, that's 42% and the wind speed. Also, it has some weather icons that are built in, which shows and changes according to the weather condition. Now, Simple Weather JS uses the Yahoo Weather API to get the weather and has many features that we'll explore. The basic features that we want in our weather application is displaying the temperature, units in centigrade. We want to display the current location. We want to display the weather icon, taking reference from the Yahoo Weather codes. We also want the humidity percentage and the wind speed. Now, the design development of this application is beyond the scope of this tutorial and that's why I have created the whole document with HTML and CSS files available from download at bit.ly slash weather app code. Now, once you head on to the link, you'll be given a zip file which you can save on your desktop or any other place on your computer and then you can extract this to get a folder called asset weather app code. Now, just for simplicity, we'll name it weather app and next I can safely delete the asset weather app code zip file and I can drag this into my brackets code editor. If I open up the index.html, you can see simple code, very few lines of code and every other styling is being done by the CSS files. Now we don't need to bother much about the CSS files or the HTML file, but there are a few lines of code that we need to remember precisely. The class names of these classes, the location, the temperature, the climate BG, the humidity and the wind speed. These are the text and HTML things that we are going to replace dynamically in our JavaScript file. Now, if you look at the file structure, you'll see there's a CSS directory which contains our CSS files. There's an images directory inside which we have the dynamic and static images. The droplet, wind and sun, these are the static images. And by the way, sun.svg is just a placeholder. I've placed this in my design so that you can quickly have a look where the weather icon will be placed. Now sun.svg will eventually be replaced by weather icons which contains 0 through 47. These are the weather codes that is provided by Yahoo Weather API. I have named them as such so that it matches with the weather code. Now first of all we need to run a server on our current directory in order to utilize the location features. I'll go into my terminal and change the directory into the weather app. Now inside this I can run an HTTP server to start the server on port 8080. Now if I go into my browser and refresh this page, you can see all the static images and text. Now we have to make these things dynamic. So for that, we need to link some JavaScript files first. Inside the JavaScript directory, I'll create a new file and I'll name it weather.js. Now once I've done that, I'll head on to cdnjs.com and I'll search for jQuery first. Once I've got jQuery result, I'll copy the HTTP URL and inside brackets, I can create a new script tag and set the source to the following URL. Also, I will need another script file. So in the CDNJS website, I'll search for simpleweather.js. Here it is, jQuery simple weather. I'll copy the HTTP URL and inside brackets, I'll paste that URL in my source. The third script file we need is our own weather.js. With that done, I save my index.html file and if I go ahead into my weather app and refresh this page, you can see no significant changes in our weather application. Now let's go ahead and remove this text from our document because we are going to make these things dynamic. And as I said, this image is just a placeholder. We don't need this image in future. Now if I save this index.html and refresh this page again, now you can see everything's blank. Now when we place these values dynamically, you don't have to worry anything about styling because all the styling is already done by me. Now let's go ahead and start writing our weather.js. Now to load the weather for the user's current location, we have to utilize the geolocation API. And to use the geolocation API, we have to make sure that the user's browser supports the geolocation API, which is supported by most of the current browser. To do that, we'll perform a quick check. We'll say if geolocation in navigator so if it's supported, then navigator.geolocation will get the current position and the following function will be run with an object of position. So it'll run the load weather function, which is a user defined function. It'll start with the position coordinates latitude and along with it, position coordinates longitude. Once you've done loading the latitude and longitude, it will load the weather. 
Now, if the user's browser doesn't support geolocation, which is highly unlikely, we also add a fallback. The load weather function also takes in a WOE ID that will remain blank for now. Next thing we want to accomplish, the weather should be refreshed in a specified interval of time. And for that, we'll use the set interval function. It will refresh the get weather object after a duration of 10 seconds. That's equivalent to 10,000 milliseconds. Next, let's go ahead and create the load weather function. First parameter it will take in is the location, so we'll assign it to variable location. And the second one is the WOE ID as I specified earlier. Now, first we'll create a class called Simple Weather, and inside this we'll specify certain parameters that it needs to take in. First being the location, we'll drag from the location variable that is being passed into the function. The next is the WOE ID which if passed will be loaded from the WOE ID variable that being passed. And next, we also need to specify the unit in which the weather will be loaded. And that in my case would be centigrade, which can also be changed to Fahrenheit. Now, if everything is success, then it will run the following function, creating an object weather. First of all, it will load the current city of the user. So we'll assign it to a variable called city and it will load the weather dot city. Next, it will load the temperature. So we'll assign it to variable temp. Now, we also need that degree sign that we had seen in the demo. So for that, we'll use the HTML code of degree. We're finished with the temperature. Next, we need the W code. That is the weather code that is provided by the Yahoo API, which will help us display the current weather icon. So this time, this will be an image, as you've remembered from the sun.svg that I specified in the index.html document. It will have a class of weather icon so that the CSS can detect it. The source will be set to images slash weather icons followed by the weather code. And as I've named the files according to the weather codes, no need to worry, it will be loaded automatically. And we'll complete it by the trailing SVG extension. Okay, so we have completed that. Next thing we want to load is the wind speed. We'll assign it to a variable called wind. And this time we'll start with a paragraph. That's because we need the wind speed and the units for the wind speed in different lines. And that's the way the document has been styled. First we'll load the wind speed. And the next thing we need, we'll close the paragraph tag, start a new paragraph tag, and we'll load the units of the wind speed. So weather. So once we have done that, we'll complete it with the closing paragraph tag and that is done as well now last thing we need is the humidity we'll assign it to a variable called humidity and inside this we'll load the weather.humidity and followed by trailing percentage symbol now we are done loading all the attributes and assigning them to the respective variables the next thing we need to do is dynamically place these variables into our index.html so for that we again need to remember the classes we want them into so first class is the location where we want our current location then will be the temperature here will be the current temperature next is the climate bg here will be the html code the image source that will be placed next is the humidity and the last is the wind speed now once we go ahead and weather.j you can see quite a few jslint problems these are just syntax errors and you don't need to worry about them i'll just close this off first i'll target the location class and i'll pass in the text of city next targeted class will be the temperature and we'll pass in the HTML of temperature variable. Next, we'll target the climate BG where our image will be shown. We'll pass in the HTML this time as well of the variable W code. Next, we'll target the wind speed. Here, we have to pass in the HTML again. So, we'll pass in the variable wind. Next, we will target the last selector that is the humidity. And this time, we can pass in the text. So once we have done that, we are complete with the success attribute. We'll close the success attribute off. And the next thing we want to do is an error exception. We'll initiate the function of error with an object error. And it will target the error class, which is not currently created. We'll create it shortly inside our index.html document. And inside this, it will display the HTML of error in a paragraph. Once we have done that, we have finished with the error function as well. Next, we can close everything off. First, we'll close off the simple weather object. And lastly, we'll close the load weather function. 
Now with this, we are done with the weather.js. We can go ahead into our browser and check if there is any errors in our weather.js. Now if I reload this page, you can see the location is not being displayed. Now, if I go back into my code editor and inspect the code for errors, I can see two current errors. The first one, we have not closed the ready function properly. We have to end it with a round bracket and a semicolon. And we had specified the weather unit speed where the weather is a typo. Now if I change that to weather and save this document finally, I can go ahead into my browser and refresh this page. And you can see it asks for my location now. If I allow it to have my location, it'll have my location and load the weather within few seconds. Now you can see I'm currently in Barasat, which is the detected location. And the weather now is 27 degrees centigrade. It also displays the weather icon corresponding to the weather code. It also displays me the humidity and the wind speed. Now this app can be further extended by adding features like weather for the next 7 days and so certain new design changes can also be implemented in this weather application. Now if you build an application based on this code, don't forget to show it to me either on Facebook, Twitter or Google+. I'll be quite happy to see you code. Now with that, we come to an end to our screencast. Hope you've enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to my channel. This is Upamanyu signing off from screencast number 15. Thank you.